Hey there, Scott here. Your video is going to start in just one moment. I just wanted to say thank you for stopping by my channel. The video that you're about to see is part of a series of videos. All of these videos are educational. They're teaching you a strategy or they're teaching you about a new tool or they're walking you through a campaign or somebody's delivering insight. All of the people that teach over in these videos, some of them are me, but a lot of them are other individuals who are subject matter experts in their field. I hope that these videos will be useful. There's a variety of sales videos, marketing marketing videos, videos that highlight and discuss different tools and technology, as well as videos that discuss high level as well as granular strategy. These are meant for individuals that are looking to level up in their own career, or if you're going down an entrepreneurial road and you want to understand how to build a business from the ground up, a lot of these videos can help you as well. If you enjoyed the video and you watched the whole thing, if you got some value from it, which I really hope you do, uh, please like, obviously hit that subscribe button. It means a lot. But also I want you to check out two other free resources. They're there's a newsletter, a bi-weekly newsletter called ROI Overload that basically highlights the best, the latest, the greatest, the tools, strategy, insights, articles, case studies for sales, marketing, entrepreneurship. And if newsletters aren't your thing, then you can also check out the ROI Overload Medium publication. Again, it's a free resource that allows you to read case studies, learn from people that have done it before. A wide range of authors contribute to the ROI Overload Medium publication. Again, link is in the description of this video. I hope you enjoy all these resources. I hope you get some benefit out of them. That's all I got. Here's your video. Hello and welcome. Now in this course, you are going to receive a tutorial on a basic setup of Google Analytics on your site. Now we'll start with how to begin with a new Google Analytics account. Now you'll be connecting your website and or custom page builders or even your WordPress site. Then we'll be walking through some of the specialized features of Google Analytics, such as setting up annotations so that you'll know how your site is performing at a glance. We'll be setting up intelligence events so that you can have emails sent to you when certain things happen on your site. We'll be setting up custom segments so that you can break down different views of your website activity. We'll then be looking at specialized functions of Google Analytics. We'll be talking about how you can export your data for further analysis, as well as setting up custom reports. And we'll also be talking about different integrations that you can do with Google Analytics to extend the functionality. We'll be talking about different templates that have already been created that you can actually use so that you don't have to create them all yourself and specialized actions such as real-time reporting. And real-time reporting allows you to see what's happening with your site at the moment. And you'll see how to view this through your Google Analytics account. Now you'll see how to read your reports. And finally, you'll conclude the course with being able to do a basic setup. And of course, when the course is over, you'll be able to do your own basic setup and explain what's happening in your reports. You'll then be set up for more in-depth and advanced study of everything that Google Analytics has to offer. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Hello and welcome. In this video, we are going to take a look at the navigation and the admin panel for Google Analytics. And when you reach the URL, you're just going to go ahead and click Google Analytics, and this will bring you into the home screen. Now, there are a couple of things that you'll want to take note of. First, the upper right hand corner, you're going to see three dots. You're going to click those dots and then you're going to click into user settings. This is where your account identification information is going to be. And the account will start with a default date range of seven days. You want to look at something more than that. You can look at as much as a month at a glance, but typically you're going to look at seven days or a week. You scroll down, you're going to have certain things in your account by default. And that means then that Google Analytics will send you information on all four categories, including performance suggestions, feature announcements, feedback, and then other offers from Google. If you don't want to receive any of this information, you can actually untick all of the things that you don't want to receive. Now, email analytics will come direct to your mailbox and you can get all website data for any website that you have set up for Google Analytics. You can have that set up by default in this area when you start your account. And we'll now go back to the home page 
and you're going to see a left side menu here and some of this left side menu we'll be discussing in this course we're going to be discussing the reports menu real-time audience acquisition behavior and conversions all these are reporting mechanisms they'll tell you certain information about your sites and your traffic the customization menu will give you latitude over how you want to get the information and what you actually want to see and we'll talk about that in this course also discover is additional information and research on Google Analytics and the admin panel at the very bottom is where you'll be doing most of the work in setting up websites and other factors of your Google Analytics for example if you were to look at the properties menu you'll see that we can pull down this drop-down menu and we'll see all of the sites that we have set up with a particular account in fact if we want to create a new property or a new analytics set of reports for a particular website this is where we will create that new information now it's quite possible that you could be working with a client and if that's the case you will actually create an account for their information by going to this account area and when you want to take a look at different kinds of views you can actually do that from the view menu and you can create that view we'll actually discuss that in this course so you've now seen a basic orientation of the dashboard and how you navigate and with that thanks and I will see you in another video hello and welcome in this video we are going to take a look at the navigation and the admin panel for Google Analytics and when you reach the URL you're just going to go ahead and click Google Analytics and this will bring you into the home screen now there are a couple of things that you'll want to take note of first the upper right hand corner you're going to see three dots you're going to click those dots and then you're going to click into user settings this is where your account identification information is going to be and account will start with a default date range of seven days you want to look at something more than that you can look at as much as a month at a glance but typically you're going to look at seven days or a week you scroll down you're going to have certain things in your account by default and that means then that Google Analytics will send you information on all four categories including performance suggestions feature announcements feedback and then other offers from Google if you don't want to receive any of this information you can actually untick all of the things that you don't want to receive now email analytics will come direct to your mailbox and you can get all website data for any website that you have set up for Google Analytics you can have that set up by default in this area when you start your account I will now go back to the home page and you're going to see a left side menu here and some of this left side menu we'll be discussing in this course we're going to be discussing the reports menu real-time audience acquisition behavior and conversions all these are reporting mechanisms they'll tell you certain information about your sites and your traffic the customization menu will give you latitude over how you want to get the information and what you actually want to see and we'll talk about that in this course also discover is additional information and research on Google Analytics and the admin panel at the very bottom is where you'll be doing most of the work in setting up websites and other factors of your Google Analytics for example if you were to look at the properties menu you'll see that we can pull down this drop-down menu and we'll see all of the sites that we have set up with a particular account in fact if we want to create a new property or a new analytics set of reports for a particular website this is where we will create that new information now it's quite possible that you could be working with a client and if that's the case you will actually create an account for their information by going to this account area and when you want to take a look at different kinds of views you can actually do that from the view menu and you can create that view we'll actually discuss that in this course so you've now seen a basic orientation of the dashboard and how you navigate and with that thanks and I will see you in another video hello and welcome now it's quite possible that you do not have a Google Analytics account connected to the Google email address that you want to use and if that's the case you are going to want to set up the Google email address where you want to receive notifications and where you want to hold your records 
And to do that, you are going to go back to the Google Analytics account. And you're going to want to make sure that you are signed in to the account where you actually want the new Google Analytics to be associated. And you're going to just go into Google Analytics and you are going to come to a screen where Google will ask you to sign up, add tracking code, and pretty much learn about your audience. And all you'll need to do is to click this sign up button and then you'll be taken to the new account setup. Now, when you first sign up, Google is going to ask that you create one account name and that you create a website name. You're going to have to set up at least one website in order to get started. Now we are going to walk through that process in a separate video, but you can actually write in all of the minimal amount of information that you need. And then Google will actually bring you to the terms of service. You want to read them and then click accept. And one of the reasons why you might set up a different account is because you might want to have different access for different users. If that's the case, what you're going to do with this second account is you're going to add a user. And you can do that by going to the admin area. And you'll see on this left hand side that there is a user management link. You're going to click that link. And then you're going to add account users. And what you're going to do is you're going to click this plus button. And then you're going to add in some other email addresses of individuals that are going to have access to the account. Of course, you're going to make sure that they're notified by email. And then you're going to determine whether or not they have certain permissions. If you want to give them permission in order to update the account and edit it, you're going to give them that permission. And then it automatically gives them access to collaborate. Now, you can also decide that you don't want to give them access to the edit, but you want them to be able to collaborate. You can decide not to do that one and you can give them read only access. And in some cases where you have client and you want to give them access to their own account so they can see it, but you don't want to have them inside of the one that you're creating for other properties in this separate account, we can give them the ability to read and analyze when we give them access to the account. We can determine that we want them to be able to manage users and whatever level of permissions that we have decided to give this person, we can go ahead and then click add. So basically what you have now is you have another account that you can actually use and you can have other people attached to it. While at the same time, you can keep a separate account to manage certain properties and you don't want to have others connected to it. Okay, so with that, thanks and I will see you in another video. Hello and welcome. Now in this video, we are going to set up an account for any website, web page, or set of pages that you are going to track. In order to do that, you are going to go to the admin area, and you can reach the admin area by clicking this gear icon. When you get there, you're going to look for this property drop down menu, and then you're going to click create new property. When you get there, you're typically going to be tracking a website of some kind. So you're going to click website. Now, if you are tracking the activity on the mobile app, you're going to want to click this box. But in most cases, you'll be tracking your website activity. Now, you're going to write in a name that you're going to see internally. And this is going to be something that you're going to see from inside of the website. So you want to go ahead and write in a website name. Once you do that, you're going to write in the website URL. And the website URL is actually where you're going to put the tracking code for a specific property. So in this case, you can actually write in an entire website or you can actually put in a website that you're going to be tracking within a subdirectory. So in this case, we're going to put in a website in a subdirectory. Now you're going to be asked the industry category and you're going to be using this primarily for comparison's sake. So what you're going to do is pick the general area that your site is going to be in, and then you're going to pick a reporting time zone. Now, the reporting time zone is going to give the time for your particular site, and you want to be able to follow the activity based on what you know about your time. So you want to go ahead and set this particular site to your time zone. Once you do that, you're going to click the tracking ID. And once you have the tracking ID, you're going to look at this number. And this is going to be the number that you'll be entering in when you are going to be working with WordPress or you're going to be working with a specific property or a plugin of some kind. You're also going to see that you have a 
you're also going to see that you have a JavaScript code. And that JavaScript code is what you're going to actually copy into the website where you're actually going to be looking. And this will actually measure all of the activity from the level at which you connect the code to everything that happens underneath that code or in every subdirectory afterwards. For example, you'll so for example, you'll see that you have in a website here, you have a subdirectory, and Google Analytics will be set to track from this directory and everything that happens after this subdirectory. Once you have your tracking code, you are going to go to the data collection area. And if you're going to keep up with your audience demographics and their interests, you are going to want to enable this feature and you'll need to turn this on. Now, if you're going to be doing retargeting with your account and you want to track the effects of that retargeting, you're going to want to turn on remarketing. But in most cases, until you're actually doing it, you can actually leave this turned off. Once you have the advertising reporting features turned on, you're going to click Save. Now, if you go to the left side menu, you're going to scroll down and you'll see a link here that says referral exclusion list. And this is pretty important. If you have a lot of traffic coming from a particular site, let's say that you're selling a product on an affiliate network, because that won't be an indication of how much traffic you're actually getting. It's just a referral or it's a pass through. So if you have any sites that send you lots of visitors, but you're not necessarily looking to track that activity, you want to include them in your referral exclusion list. And the same concept is going to be true if you go to the left side menu and you click the search term exclusion list. If you have a particular term or a way that people find your site or find your location that isn't necessarily going to help you in terms of tracking that information, you want to include that search term in your search term exclusion list. But once you've done that, you're going to come back to your property settings and you're going to go ahead and turn on your demographic and interest report button as well as your in-page analytics button. And once you've done that, you can then hit save. And once your content has been saved, you are then ready to connect your Google Analytics account to your website. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Hello and welcome. You are now looking at a WordPress website, and you're actually looking at the admin panel. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a connection between Google Analytics and our WordPress website. Now you're going to do this through an installed plugin. And so if you don't already have a plugin that accepts Google Analytics, you're going to go and you're going to click the Add New link where you see the plugin section. So you can actually click this plugin section. You can then click the Add New button. And what you're going to do when you get there is you're going to click inside of this dialog box. And you're just going to write in Google Analytics. Now, WordPress has a number of plugins available. You'll typically want to make sure that you have one that is reviewed and that has a good track record of updating the plugin. Once you find one with good reviews and a fair number of installs, you're going to click the Install Now button. Once you do that, you're going to click Activate, and then you'll see the plugin has been installed in your plugin directory. What you're going to do now is you want to hover over your settings area, and then you want to go down to the link in the menu. Now, in some cases, you'll see the plugin, depending on which one you install, will actually have its own separate menu someplace on the left side menu, but typically you'll see one in the settings area. So go ahead and click the link that says Google Analytics. Now in this particular case, you are going to have some configuration that you're going to need to do. We're going to dismiss this notice and save the preference. And then we're going to come into the plugin settings. So you'll notice right away that you're going to be asked for a Google Analytics property ID. Now that's going to refer to the ID that we saw in Google Analytics when we created a website property. So let's go back to Google Analytics right now. And you'll notice that there is a tracking ID. We're going to copy that ID. And then we're going to carry it back to our website. And then we're going to enter the property ID. We're then going to click Enable on our site. 
that once we've enabled analytics, all the other settings are going to be optional if you know that you want to configure them. So what we're going to do is we're going to scroll down to two other settings. We're going to enable Google Analytics in the WordPress admin area, and we're going to disable it for other users. Once we do that, we're going to then click Settings. Now some plugins will be ready almost immediately. Other plugins expect 24 to 48 hours, as is the case with the plugin that you're watching right here. But typically, if you know your property ID and you can actually enable a few clicks, you can set up Google Analytics with your WordPress website. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Hello and welcome. You are now looking at an HTML-based website. And it's quite possible that you'll want to track the activity on this particular page or site. If that's the case, you are going to be able to place your Google Analytics code on the page where your site is. So we're going to go through that process in this video. Now you are going to need an HTML editor for this particular page in order to place the code. In order to do that, you are going to want to find one of the free editors or use the one that you have. We are going to look for one called NVU by going to Google. And if we go to Google and we just type in NVU, it's typically going to be the first result that will come up. It's at NVU.com. You're going to want to go to that site. You'll then want to either download NVU or Composer. Either one will serve as an effective HTML editor. But once you have NVU open, you are going to then open the index file of the web page you are going to be tracking. Once you have the page open, you're going to go to your source code. Once you do that, you're going to come back to Google Analytics and you're going to pick up the tracking code that you are going to be using for this particular site. And we're going to copy all of this code and then we're going to go back to our HTML site in order to paste the code. Now the code should go someplace in the header area, typically. And so we're going to go ahead and we're going to place this code in the header area. Once we do that, we're going to click the Save button. And then our site will be ready to be uploaded to our server. We're then going to take the website files and we're going to drag and drop them into the directory where we're going to be installing the site. And as you can see, even though we pasted the code, the form of the website doesn't change. And now we're ready to track from this particular website. If you're going to have multiple one page websites, you're going to want to make sure that Google Analytics is actually placed on each and every one of these pages if you want to track the activity. Now, one thing that we'll want to do is we we'll want to make sure that the code is actually working. And one of the ways that we can do that is we can go to the dashboard and we can look at the real time statistics in Google Analytics. And if we go to the real time statistics, you'll see that there was one page view just eight minutes ago, and that was when we were actually visiting the site. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Hello and welcome. When you are adding Google Analytics to a WordPress website, typically you will add the code using a plugin. However, you may be using a custom page builder or membership script. And when that is the case, there is typically a specific operation you use in order to get Google Analytics installed. In this particular case, we're going to look at Optimize Press, which is a WordPress page builder. Now, your page builder might be different, but you will want to check the instructions to find out exactly how to work with your particular theme or page builder. So let's go inside of this dashboard. And once we get there, we're going to go inside of Optimize Press. Optimize Press actually has its own menu and dashboard. We're going to go inside of the dashboard. When you get there, you're actually going to see that Optimize Press has a section called Analytics and Tracking. You're going to go inside of that area. And once you get there, Optimize Press gives you some instructions. So that typically you're going to be placing that code before the header tag, but in this case, Optimize Press gives you a location to actually put your code. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go back, we're going to grab the code, and we're going to place the entire code inside of the Analytics and Tracking area for Google Analytics. 
Now, if you don't have a property already, you're going to create one. And you're going to do that by coming to the admin area. You're then going to come to this drop down menu and you're going to click create new property. And then you're going to give this property a name. You're going to put your website URL in and then you're also going to define your industry category. You're going to set up your reporting time and then you're going to click get tracking ID. So once you have the tracking code, you're going to grab all the tracking code and you're going to copy it and you're going to head back to your website. And when you're at your site, you're going to place the code inside of the tracking area. And again, every page builder and every site builder is going to be slightly different, but typically there will always be a section for you to place the Google Analytics code on a particular page or series of pages. Now, in this particular case, you are actually going to be able to use this code throughout the entire site through this theme. Once you've done that, then all you'll need to do is click Save Settings. And then your code will then be added to your custom page builder. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Hello and welcome. Now, it's quite possible that you want to take note of when a specific event happened so that you'll be able to measure it against the activity that you're seeing in your Google Analytics account. And Google Analytics has given you a tool inside of your system to help you with that process and it's called creating annotations now if you go to your audience menu and you look at the overview for a particular site that's what we are looking at right now you will notice that there is activity on certain days now we could mark a specific day when an activity happened so that we might be able to look at our chart or look at our data and see that there was an effect to what actually happened in order to do that, we would then go to this middle bar and we would click this arrow and then we would click create new annotation. Once we create the annotation, we're actually going to write in the actual activity. Now we can decide whether or not we want this visibility to be shared or private. Once we do that, we can then click save. We can then notate this by clicking the star. So that then the star will actually show up on our overview chart. Now there is another way to set up an annotation and you can actually set one up for something that's going to happen in the future. And you can do that by going to your admin panel. And once you've actually picked the website that you're going to want to annotate, you're going to come to this right side, you're going to scroll down and you're going to click annotations. What you're then able to do is to click new annotation. You can make sure that this annotation will be starred and then you can actually pick your date and what the event is actually going to be. Now, again, if you want the rest of your team or anyone else that's looking at the account to actually see your annotation, you're going to click shared. If you don't, you can actually click private and it'll only show up then in your account. Once you actually have the annotation, you can click create annotation. You can then go back and create another annotation in the very same way if you want to mark the end of something or you want to mark the beginning of something new. Annotations are a way of your being able to track activity based on events that happen in your business. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Once you have Google Analytics set up on your website, you can have the system alert you to certain activity on your site. Maybe there's been a spike in traffic or maybe there's been a decrease in traffic. Maybe there has been an unusual amount of activity to a particular thank you page where you have a download. When those cases happen, you can actually have Google Analytics send you a custom alert. And in this video, we're going to show you how to create those custom alerts. What you'll want to do first is you'll want to go to your admin panel. And then when you go all the way over to the right side, you'll see that there is a link there for custom alerts. Now, when you click the custom alerts, what you're going to do is you're going to click new alert. And then you're going to give your alert a name. Now, you can have this set up for one or all of your sites. And what you're going to do is you're going to then 
decide the time period. So you might say on a specific day, you want this alert to happen and the email to be sent. So you would actually then set up your email and then include any other emails that you want to have see the alert. Perhaps you have an outsourcer or you have someone you're working with or a partner and you want them to get the email also. You can also set up your mobile device in order to receive a text message when the alert takes place. Now we'll need to go and take a look at the alert conditions to configure the actual email. Now what we can do is we can decide on what kind of traffic it will actually give us. We can have it to be all traffic or we can narrow it down by any of these menus. We can alert when certain events happen with either sessions, with users, with page views, with a bounce rate, with an average session duration or new sessions. In this particular case, we're going to say that we want something to happen when there is a specific number of page views. Now what we're going to do is we're going to say that we want this alert to happen if the page views are going to increase by more than, we're going to say by 100 visitors, when a certain comparison is made. Now we can have the previous day, we can have the same day in the previous week, or the same day in the previous year. We could say that if our page views happened on the previous day, we want to have an alert sent to us. And so once we have the alert set up, what we're going to do is we're going to click Save Alert. And of course, once we have one alert set up, we can set up as many alerts as we like according to what we actually want to see. So again, all we'll need to do is we'll need to give the alert a name, but the most important thing will be what we want to actually see. Maybe we want to actually see if there is a bounce rate increasing by a certain value. And maybe perhaps we might say that we want the comparison time will be the previous day. So again, there's a lot of flexibility where you can actually have your Google Analytics send you an email when something is happening that you'll want to take note of inside of your website system. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Hello and welcome. Now, Google Analytics will allow you to look at certain websites and notice the behavior of certain segments of that website. So for example, if we go to our admin page, and that's where we are right now, we can look at a specific site that we have under analytics, and then we can go to a portion of the site called segments. When we get to the segments area, we can actually create a certain segment. And when we click new segment, we can then name our segment and we can decide on certain parameters that we actually want to view. For example, we can decide that we want to see a certain age range. We can decide we want to see a certain gender. We can decide that we want them to make sure that they're speaking a specific language. And we can also determine that the individual has to be in a certain geographical location. We can go further with segmentation and determine that the individual is using a mobile tablet or a mobile device of some kind. We can then add in behavior segmentation pieces and this is the behavior that they engage in while on our site. We can decide we want that segment to have come a specific way. And we can go through some advanced conditions and sequences. However, what you're trying to do is you're trying to determine a specific segment of your traffic and what they're doing when they come to your site by tracking them separately based on your parameters. And once you have all the parameters in that you're going to want to look at, you're then going to want to click Save. And then you'll have your first segment that Google Analytics will be tracking. And we can actually decide on new segments to break down our analysis further. Once you have your custom segment set up, Google Analytics will then start tracking this data specifically according to your parameters. And it will track it in addition to the more general information that it does by default. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Hello and welcome. As you begin to collect data on your website activity, you will be able to look at that website activity on your left side menu 
in various ways. For example, you may be looking at your data in terms of its audience. In the case, you'll get a report that looks something like this. When that happens, you will then be able to take all of that data, export it to another program for more analysis and display. And the way that you'll do that is you'll go to the top and you'll see that there is a button there that says export. You're going to click that button. You will have the opportunity to export the data in terms of the PDF format, Google Sheets format, Microsoft Excel, or a CSV file for more number crunching. So in this particular case, we're going to create a CSV file from the audience view. You will then save that information to your hard drive. Then the data will be available in actual data points inside of your CSV file. Now, if you want data points for a different period of time, you are actually going to go to the calendar app here. And then you're going to set that period based on the specifics that you lay out. Once you've chosen the data points, you're going to click apply. You're going to see your data change and then you can then export a different report for the next period of time that you are actually looking for. And then you'll be able to save that period of time to your hard drive. And you can do that for any way that you choose to look at the actual data. If you want to look at the data in terms of an hourly period, you can also extract that data in the very same way. So what you'll want to do is to determine what you're actually looking for and what gives you decision-making information. You'll determine the date, and then you'll export the data into a format that will allow you to do the analysis. Again, you can do that with any report on the left side menu. You'll notice that if the report is changed to a device report, you'll have data that you can actually set a period of time, apply it, and once again, you can then export the data based on the way that you choose to look at it. In this particular case, we'll choose weekly. And then we'll export that data into another CSV file. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Now, once you begin collecting data on a regular basis for your websites, you may discover that there is a specific way of looking at your business that will give you the maximum amount of information. And when that's the case, you may want to create a custom report. And to do that, you are going to go to the customization button, and then you're going to click custom reports. When you get to the menu, you're gonna click new custom report. And then you're gonna give that custom report a title. Now Google Analytics will allow you to create a multifaceted report. And you can actually do that by creating different tabs with different sets of information. You can actually write in a different tab. And once you do that, you're going to just click Add Report Tab. And you'll notice then that your report will then be in one tab inside of the creation screen. You can then create another tab. Once you've created that, you'll then click Add Report Tab. So now what you'll need to do is you'll need to customize each one of the reports to give you the information that you actually want. Now you can create your report so that it's going to be one set of data in a report. You can have multiple sets of data in a report in a flat table, or you can lay out that data geographically using the map. Now in this particular case, we're just going to use the Explorer report where we can drill down into the information. And whenever you have a custom report, there are two parameters you're going to need to set. You're going to need to set the quantitative measurement, and that's the metric. And so you can choose a quantitative measurement that you actually want to determine. For example, maybe you want to determine how much time on the page a particular person spends. Then the dimension, you can determine how, the, how your metric is categorized. So you'll add a dimension. And as you're determining which dimensions you're going to add, if you want to know how they're actually defined, if you hover over the question mark, it'll actually give you some description on exactly what that dimension is going to be. Optionally, you can add in a filter, and you can do that in any way that you want. For example, if you want to filter out 
a particular type of social information, you can actually do that. And finally, when we create this report, we can actually create it based on one view, which is one of our website properties, or we can choose to do it for all of our website properties. In this particular case, we're going to do this for all of our website properties, and we're going to click Save. Once you actually save the report, you'll see it on your dashboard, and you can then export the data into another program if you want to do further analysis. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, Google Analytics integrates with four different Google services, YouTube, Google Search Console, Google AdWords, and Google AdSense. Now, of the four, Google AdSense and Google AdWords will not necessarily be used by every analytics user. More likely, though, there will be more widespread use with Search Console and YouTube. So in this video, we're going to show you how to integrate Google Analytics with those two services. First, if you go to one of your website properties and you actually go and you look at the Acquisition tab, you're going to see something that says Landing Pages. And if you click that tab, it's going to give you a message saying that you'll want to set up Google Search Console data sharing. Now, once you have decided that you are going to integrate these two services, you can go ahead and click that setup button. Now, in order to integrate these two services, you will already need to have Google Search Console installed on your website. If you have it installed, you'll be able to scroll down and you'll see that there is a button here that says Adjust Search Console. You can go ahead and click that button. And you'll see here that Search Console will have a message saying that if your site has been verified, you can add it. You'll go ahead and click the Add button. What you're going to do is you're going to select the site that you're going to be adding, and then you're going to click Save. Google will give you a message saying that you're going to save a new association. You'll click OK. Your site will then be associated in Analytics with Search Console. Now what we'll need to do is we'll go and we'll associate your Google Analytics account with your YouTube account. And to do that, you'll need to create a new property. And you'll need to create it for your YouTube account. Once you've set up your parameters, you're going to click Get Tracking ID. Then you're going to pick up your tracking ID. Then you're going to head to your YouTube account. Once you're inside of your Creator Studio, you are then going to need to go to your channel area. Then you'll need to go to the Advanced link. And then if you scroll all the way down, you'll notice that there is a space for your Google Analytics property ID. You're going to go ahead and paste in your tracking ID. Once you do that, you'll then hit save. Then your Google Analytics account will then begin tracking information for your YouTube account. And you have now integrated your services with Google Analytics. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Hello and welcome. Now in this video, we are going to be discussing using Google search templates in order to create custom reports and custom views. Now, if you go to any search engine, in particular the Google search engine, and you type in Google Analytics Solutions Gallery, you're going to see a result at the very first spot and you're going to click that result. That's going to bring you into crowdsourced solutions from other people that have actually created different ways of viewing Google Analytics as well as working with the data. Now if you have a particular solution that you're looking for, you can actually write that solution into the search bar to find out if there is an existing solution or view that has been created. And when you write your search result in, you'll see all of the reports that are going to be available to you as well as reviews of that report and any comments from those that have actually used them. You can also take a look at the most popular reports as they're likely to be well reviewed as well as high performing. There's also a recommended section and you'll see that section at the bottom. Google divides its view of the solutions into dashboards, custom reports, and top segments. Now you'll see here that there is one bundle called the new Google Analytics User Starter Bundle. 
and you can go ahead and click that bundle and you can actually import that bundle into your series of reports. You can decide to take any view or you can select a specific view. Once you've done that, you'll click create. You'll then see the new custom reports set up inside of the view that your account had by default. So again, so to find different reports that have already been created and views that have already been created, you can use those that are already in existence, created by individuals that have been using them so that you won't have to create custom segments or reports by scratch. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, one feature of Google Analytics is that you can actually monitor real-time statistics on your site. And to do that, you are actually going to go to the home page inside of your Google Analytics account. When you do that, you'll see your dashboard, and then you're going to click real-time. Now, you'll start with the overview page. The overview page will give you real-time information for whichever site you have selected, and it'll give you page views and active pages by default. It'll actually tell you what's happening at a particular location. Now, in this particular case, if you are tracking information in a local area or you are a local business, then this will really help you to be able to determine what's happening in a particular part of the world or a particular part of your country at one time. You can also check traffic sources. So, for example, if you want to know what's happening with your mobile users at this particular moment or with your, or with your computer users, you'll be able to see that with this real-time data. You can actually determine what's happening with a particular piece of content. So maybe you just released a particular blog post or you put something together that people are reading right now. Well, you can actually watch their reaction to that piece and you'll be able to determine whether or not it's successful in what it's supposed to be doing. You can determine the success of an event. And an event can be anything that you determine as a one-time occurrence or something that you want to measure. You can actually measure that event in Google real time. And finally, you can also measure your conversions. Now, in this particular case, you'll want to make sure that you have your goals set up. You want to make sure that you have pages set up that will determine whether or not people are reaching your thank you page so that you'll know whether or not you're actually converting your particular offer. You can monitor that in real time in Google Analytics. So this one section of Google Analytics, the real time section, gives you information about what's happening on your sites and properties at this time. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, in this video, we are going to be discussing how you can set up goals so that you can tell if your site visitors are taking the action that you want them to take when they're on your site. Now, to set up your goals, you're going to go to the Admin tab, and then you're going to come to the right side panel, and you're going to click Goals. So what you're going to do is you're going to start by clicking new goal. And then initially you're going to see a number of templates. So the setup will already be basically done for you for these kinds of goal setups. So in this particular case, if you want to know whether or not your site visitors are actually following through and making a payment, you can use the existing template for that goal setup. You can use it for reservations or making an appointment or any of these other factors. These are preset templates that Google will give you in order for you to set up your goals. Now, the other way to set up goals will be to set up a custom goal. And when you do that, you're going to click continue. And you're going to give that goal a description. And you're going to ID this as your first goal. Now, there are four types of goals that you can actually set. One is whether or not a person actually makes it to a particular page. That's a destination goal. Another is a duration goal. In other words, does a person spend a certain amount of time on a particular page? The third is number of pages on your site that a person has visited. And that is a page or screen per session goal. And the other is an event, such as did someone play a video or did they take some kind of action? 
whenever you decide which goal that you are going to set, you can actually check the box and click destination. Now what we're going to do is actually we're going to go back and we're going to use one of the existing templates for setting a payment. And that means then that we'll click new goal. And then we'll determine whether or not someone has actually made a payment and we'll set that as our goal. And we're going to click continue. Now to determine that we're going to reason that a person had to have made our thank you page. And we're going to set that as our destination goal and we're going to click continue. Now what we're going to do is we're going to place in here our thank you page because if a person makes our thank you page we'll know then that they have made the payment. Now Google Analytics will track the monetary value of every time somebody actually reaches this page by coming to our site. We can turn this on by putting in a dollar amount. Now if we want to track activity through an entire funnel, if we are requiring our visitors to go through all of the steps of a particular funnel, we can actually set that up in this section and we can place it there by creating steps. So at the first page of the funnel, we can create a step, we can create a second step, and a third step. However many steps we have in the funnel, we can determine how much of our content that our visitors are experiencing before they drop out of the process. And what we're going to do is we're going to turn off the funnel for now and then we're going to click save this goal and so now we have set our first goal so all you'll need to do is to go to this goal area determine whether or not you're going to use one of the templates if you're not use one of the custom templates and then decide what kind of goal that you want to set and how you want to track it Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Hello and welcome. Now in this video, we're going to talk about the third-party applications that are available for you to use with Google Analytics. Now, if you come to the Google Analytics front page, you'll notice that there is a link at the top for partners. You should go ahead and click that link. When you get to this page, you'll see expert help is here. You're going to click the link that says Google Analytics Certified Partners. And then you'll see that Google Analytics offers a list of partners and solutions that they have vetted and determined worthy of a mention on their own page. Now you can find partners, you can be a partner, or you can find a third party solution. Now in this particular case, since we're not looking for service providers to help us with Google Analytics, but we might want to find an effective solution. So we're going to go ahead and click find a solution. And you'll notice that each of the solutions have certain categories for use with Google Analytics, and they also have pricing associated with them. Now, if you're not necessarily looking to pay for the service or you'd like to get some level of the service before you actually pay, you're going to start by sorting for free and then apply the filter. And what you'll see then is you'll see a number of solutions available to you and you'll then want to sort again for the kind of solution that you actually want. For example, perhaps you're looking for an e-commerce solution. If that's the case, you're going to apply that filter. And so now what we have is all of the e-commerce based solutions that come with some level of free or is entirely free in terms of their connection to Google Analytics. Now again, what you'll need to do is to make sure that you determine what it is that you actually want from your third party app or partners. Perhaps if you want social analytics, you apply the filter, you'll again find those that are already free. You can actually determine those that are paid also. And basically what you have is you have a list of companies that have decided to partner with Google to make their analytics results more robust and to find new customers. So if one of these applications fit what you are trying to do, you may want to try the free level of their solution. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Hello and welcome. Now in this video, we are going to talk about the audience page and the overview. Now, when you come to the home screen, you'll get a general sense as to what's happening with your site, the one that you have selected. You can get a more detailed picture of your site visitors, though, by 
clicking on the audience link. And when you click on the audience link, you'll want to click the overview. Now the overview will give you at a glance everything that you need to know about your audience without having to drill down. Now you'll want to first select the dates that you want to keep track of. For example, you can set this for a particular month, just as you would any other report. And apply it. And once you've done that, then you'll be able to look at each session and you'll be able to look at the report to determine the health of your audience. Now you can look at this in any number of ways. You can look at this based on the hours. You can look at this based on the days or even at a particular week. The audience overview looks at sessions and so this is a visit that a user makes to your site and stays there, either looks around or leaves. And as you go down, you'll get an overview of what these sessions look like over the course of the time period that you have selected. So for example, in this case, for this site, there were 2,401 sessions or 2,401 times when someone visited the site and stayed there for some length of time. Now, not every one of those people were new users. In fact, there were only 1,237 users. That means then that some of these users came to the site more than once. While they were on the site, they viewed a total number of 4,101 pages. And so you're getting a glimpse of what is happening on a particular site at a particular month. You'll also see that on average, when someone comes to the site, they view 1.71 pages or between one and two pages and stay on those pages approximately two minutes. Now there is a bounce rate and the bounce rate is the case where someone comes to the site and they leave right away after a short period of time. You'll also see during a particular period of time how many people actually came to the site for the first time or generated a new session. And you'll see that not only in the chart, but you'll see that in this number on your audience menu. If you scroll down in the menu, you'll get an overview of the language spoken by the individuals that come to your site inside of the demographics area. Now you can also change that demographics area to a country designation. You can see where most of your visitors will come from. You can also break it down in terms of city. And you can get a sense for how many of your visitors come from a particular city. Once again, because this is an overview, you have several instances where this data is in individual parts of the audience site, but you're given all of this at a glance. So you'll be able to tell how many of your people actually use a specific browser, how many use a particular operating system, and then what kind of internet provider that they use. And finally, you can get information on the mobile devices they use. So for example, you'll be able to find out how many people use Android versus iOS versus Windows Phone, what service provider they use, as well as what their screen resolution is. Now all of this can be helpful information because it will give you an idea of what you should be preparing in terms of content for the individuals that come to your site. And as you start to see more people interact with your site, you'll be able to give them more of the, what they want when they come to visit. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, one of the areas within your site properties in Google Analytics that you'll want to make sure it's enabled is going to be the demographics and interest reports. Now, if you enable this, that means that Google will start to collect this information and show it to you during your summary reports. However, you must enable it because, it, again, it is not enabled by default. So you'll come to your property settings for your particular site. When you scroll down through those settings, you're just going to tick this to on. And once you do that, you want to make sure then that you click save. That means then that when you start to collect information, you go back to the home screen and you are looking at your audience menu. In particular, you are looking at the overview. You're going to have certain information that you will be taking and then if you were to go into the interest area and you were to click the overview, what you would see is that 
you're going to need to enable the advertising features to support this. And so we're going to click this button. Then Google Analytics will tell us that demographics and interest reports will be collecting and that we'll start to get this information within 24 hours. Now also within the audience menu will be your geography. When we move into the language panel, we can take a deeper look into any of these numbers. For example, we can take a look at the English, US. We can go back. And look at any of the other languages and we can also take a look at the location page and the location page we can do a deeper dive into any particular country that has results for example if we chose the united states we'd be able to break down our visitors by state within the united states now interest and geography are only two of the sub menus that you actually have you also have behavior technology mobile and benchmarking and custom so all of these will give you different views of your information. However, geography, as well as interest, give you a picture of who is coming to your site and why they may be coming. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. In conclusion, you now know how to do a basic setup for Google Analytics for yours or a client's business. Now, whether you have a WordPress, HTML, or a page builder site, you can now set up your website to track activity. You've learned that the specialized features give you leverage to create your own reports and views of your information. You've also learned that integrations help you to extend the functionality of Google Analytics and give you even more leverage. And of course, you can now access real-time reporting and analyze it on the fly to know exactly what's happening on your websites at any point in time. You can now read and understand your data, customize it, and even export it if you feel it's necessary. And of course, now you're ready to look deeper at the functions as you begin to use them more every day. Now all you really need to do is to take a walkthrough of all of the basic principles you've learned so that they will stick with you. And with that, thanks, and I'll see you either in another video or in another course. Hello and welcome. Now in this course, we're going to be working through a practical example of how you set up Google Analytics for a digital product. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about some of the data metrics that you can actually view and measure throughout the entire process. We're then going to talk about some of the characteristics of setting up a digital product in order to be measured using Google Analytics. And then we're going to move on to a squeeze page setup. And then we're going to talk about how you measure the results. We're then going to move on to the split testing of a squeeze page setup. And then how to measure the results of your split test. Then going to move to your sales page setup. And then we're going to talk about how to measure what's on your sales page or the results you're going to get. We're then going to talk about the split testing of that sales page and then how to measure the results of your split test. We're then going to move on to the upsell page, and then we're going to talk about what to measure when you're talking about your upsell page. And then we're also going to talk about the success page, and we're going to talk about what to measure on that success page. Finally, we're going to talk about basic reports that you can then set up, advanced reports you can set up, and then we're going to talk about some automation that you can set up, so that you can determine what is happening on your site. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in the first video. Hello and welcome. Now in this video, we're going to go a little deeper into the definitions of what you see on the left side menu so that you'll know exactly what you're looking at as you begin to set up your Google Analytics for your sales system. Now, one of the first things you're going to see on the left side menu is going to be the audience, and that's after all of the real-time information. And the audience is who is actually visiting your site and what do you know about them. It also includes the number of views that the content actually gets. So basically, it's everything about who actually is interacting with your site. Now, if you go further, you'll notice that there is a link called acquisition. 
An acquisition is a term that describes how people are getting to your site. Do they get to your site through being advertised to? Do they come through search? Do they come through social media? Acquisition is all about how someone actually gets to your site. Then there's the behavior tab. The behavior tab is basically describing what users are doing when they're on your site. So how do they get to the pages they get to? How do they behave? How long do they stay? This tells us all about what it is that they're doing. Now conversions matter if we actually set up goals. If we set up goals where we're trying to track when someone actually completes a task or completes a process on our site, we will then have conversions because we would have designated that ahead of time with Google Analytics. So conversions tells us, are we meeting our goals? Are the visitors actually getting and doing the things that we desire them to do? Now inside of the audience overview, you're going to notice that there is a segment called new sessions and new sessions is a description of an estimate of the first time visits for our users. And Google Analytics tracks the percentage of new visitors versus returning visitors. So if we have lots of new traffic to our site. This can be a good thing. But we want a mix of people coming to our site. We want people who are so engaged with our brand, so engaged with our products that they are actually coming back. So we want to measure over time whether or not the number of people that are coming to our site are new versus returning. And then there's the term users. And users indicates someone that has actually visited the site at least one session during the period that we are actually outlining. And what we want to see is we want to see those users converted into customers, but we also want to track over time whether or not that number is rising or falling, and then we'll do more analysis to figure out whether we are converting them or not. Now, these metrics are the beginning point of understanding what you're looking at when you begin to place the code on your websites and you begin to track the activity. Now, in the next video, We'll go further into some of the side menus to describe some of the functions you see inside of Google Analytics. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, we're going to take a look at some other metrics that we should be measuring most of the time when we're looking at our Google Analytics data. And pages per session is an indication of the average number of pages that a person looks at every time that they're on our site. So if we're trying to increase the number of pages or if we have things for sale on other pages, this is an indication that we are enticing people to take other steps to look at some of our other pages. And if we're not improving, we need to continually make steps to give people links to click, content to view, so that they'll take those other steps to move to our other pages. Now, another section on this particular page, which is the audience overview, is the average session duration. And this is the amount of time that someone spends on all of our site. So it's not just one page, it's the time they spend on multiple pages before they exit out of our site for that session. And again, depending on what our goals are, it could be a goal that we want them to spend time, or it could be that we want them to come and buy and then move on, but we basically have a measure for us to look at to tell are people staying around our site are they looking at other pages and how much time do they spend on average now to look at the other measures we're actually going to go to the behavior tab here on the left side menu we're going to click the overview now page views is just a raw number it is the number of times someone views a page on our site if someone views a page more than once in a particular session then that will count toward page views. So this is a measure, but we have to remember that you could have someone who is actually viewing one page in particular twice. Now unique page views is different. This actually measures one page view per page per session. So if a user comes back to a particular page over and over again within a session, that will not be counted in this measure. So the unique page views are always going to be smaller than page views, especially if you have viewers who are looking at multiple pages or they have pages that they're looking at multiple times.
Now, what we're going to have is we're going to have some data in this area when you're actually collecting. And this will give you those individual pages where people are spending the most time, where you're getting the most page views. And you're going to want to take a look at this number because this will tell you where people are spending their time when they're on our site. Now, there's also a measure in behavior called average time on page. And this number is measured on a page by page basis. So again, this is a different measure. And if we want to know if we're keeping people on a particular page, this measure will actually tell us. Of course, then there is the bounce rate. And the bounce rate is basically described as this. A user comes to our site, they land on a page, and then they leave from that very same page. So in other words, they bounced off the page. And so it is an indication that for whatever reason, that person did not stay on that site or it didn't entice them to go to other pages on our site. The exit percentage will tell us how often someone leaves our site from a particular page. So again, this will give us an indication on a specific page that someone is finding that they can leave from this page. Now, depending on what your business model is, it could be that someone is supposed to leave from a particular page, but you have content or you're engaging people or you're starting to add content to some of the pages where people are exiting. You want to be able to measure that over time. So you now have 14 measures that you can actually use and look at repeatedly. Now, this will not stop you from creating custom reports and looking at more detail, but these 14 things are things that you can keep track of that will help you to determine what's happening on your site. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Hello and welcome. Now, in this video, we're going to be discussing setting up your digital product for sale on your website. Now, you'll notice that we are inside of WordPress, and in order to have a site where we're going to actually account for the traffic to the sales pages, opt-in pages. We want to try to keep all of our pages on one site and consistent. So if you have a, so if you don't have a plugin you're using, all you'll need to do is to install a plugin that is going to work site-wide in your WordPress website. Now there are other ways for you to be able to sell your digital product using Google Analytics. You can actually use sites like Conversely or leadpages.net. What's important about both of these platforms is that you'll need to go the extra step of associating these platforms with an actual website. That way you'll be able to track your funnels as well as your traffic. Another way to track the process is to use a page builder like Optimize Press or InstaBuilder that will actually build out your pages within your WordPress website that way, all you'll really need to do is to place the code at the top of your website or to use the tracking section, which will allow you to track your pages site wide. So for the sake of this course, we're going to create pages on one website. We're going to track our Google Analytics site wide using an analytics and tracking function. And we're going to do that inside of Optimize Press. Now, you can actually do this inside of your page builder in the very same way. You want to make sure that your tracking code is tracking site-wide in your page builder for your website. And you will create your pages as you normally would using your page builder. And you will make sure that you are able to get the URLs appropriately. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Hello and welcome. Now, in order to set up a squeeze page system, we're going to need to create three pages. We're going to need to create an opt-in page, a thank you page, and then a final landing page. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a dummy opt-in page, and we're going to just use an existing template, and we're going to create the page. Now, when we create this box, we're going to be required to put a thank you page in here, and that's actually a wise choice because as soon as the person opts in, what we want to do is we want to encourage them to go and check their email so they can finish the process. So what we're going to do now is we're going to create a thank you page URL. And we'll use an existing template. And then we'll create the page. So we have a check your email now. What we're going to do is we're just going to publish this page. And then we're going to take the URL and we're going to put it back inside of the page that we just looked at. 
So we're now going to place that thank you page inside of this dialog box so that whenever the person actually makes contact with us, they put their name and email address into our box, then they're going to be shown a page telling them to go and check their email. We're going to go ahead and save this. Now there's one more page that we need to create, and that is the page where they're actually going to get their content. So we're going to create a download page. We're going to use an existing template. And we're going to create our page. And once our download is then ready, we'll set it up on this page. Now, once again, we are using Optimized Press for the sake of simplicity. You will use the page builder that you use typically as long as it is associated with a site-wide Google Analytics code. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to get the URL to this page. Now, the reason this page is important is because the person that's actually opted in will not get access to this page until they've completed the process. So this is where they get the content. This is also where they land when they complete the process. And it's likely that you're only going to land there once. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this URL and now we are ready then to look to Google Analytics. And we're now going to go to our admin area. We get there, we're going to go to the goals area. And we're now going to define a new goal. And what we're going to do is we're going to create an acquisition goal, which is an account creation goal. And we're now going to click continue. And basically, we're saying that if a person reaches this destination, they will have completed the goals. So we're going to call this goal opt in. And then we're going to click continue. What we're going to do now is that we're going to actually place this page inside of our Google Analytics so that when the person reaches this page, they will be counted and the goal will have been reached. Now, we're not doing value. We're not doing funnel. So now what we can do is we can click Save. And so we have now set up our squeeze page system with Optimized Press. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, in order to measure whether or not we are successful in growing our email list at increasing rates, we're going to take a look at the conversions menu. And where we're going to track our goals, we're going to click Goals. And then we're going to click Overview. Once we get to that page, what you're going to notice is that there are two areas. There is the Goal Completion Location. And this is going to show you where each page resulted in a goal completion. So where someone lands on an opt-in page and then they decide to complete the process, it'll show up in this goal completion location. And you're going to get the statistics on how the page is doing and you'll be able to watch that page over time. Of course, you'll be able to trace the page and how well it's doing with custom dates. Now, right now, you don't see any data because this is a new goal. But whenever you set your goal and your traffic is running, you'll be able to come back to the overview page of the goals page within the conversions to check the goal completion location to find out how your page is doing. You will find out the total number of opt-ins for the period. You'll find out how many people are leaving the process before they finish the opt-in and you'll get a goal conversion rate based on the page that they have landed on. Now, again, all of this works because we have placed our Google Analytics code at the very top of our website and is tracking our entire site. So any place where the person lands and ends up completing the goal, it's actually going to track that and place it here inside of Google Analytics. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Hello and welcome. What we're going to do in this video is we're going to set up for a split test of the squeeze page. And in order to do that, we're going to come to our home page and we're going to come to the behavior tab. And you're going to see that there's a link there called experiments. Now, one thing you're going to note is that there is a new plugin called Google Optimize. Now, this is fairly intricate to install. And as of the recording of this video, Creating experiments is still available. However, Google does say that the analytics content experiments will be depreciated, which means they will not be supported. For now, we can actually create an experiment very simply by using this button. 
we're going to give this test a title and we're going to select a metric and the metric is going to be obviously our goal and we're going to determine the percentage of traffic to be sent to the experiment so we're going to consider sending 50 percent of the traffic to our experiment we do want to be notified of any important changes and now we're going to click next step so what we're going to do here is we're going to first place the web page that we are actually sending traffic to for the opt-in and then we're going to create a variant page which is the one that we are comparing to so we'll need to have created a second opt-in page that's going to be directing people to the same location okay so now we've got two opt-in pages and one is a test page and the other one is our original page and now we can click next step so what we're going to do here is we're going to manually insert this code and we're going to install this code where we are running the experiment so in optimize press we're just going to add in a new box here we're going to move it up to the top we're going to set it up for the header and we're going to put our code in once our code has been entered we're then going to click update and now we can click next step and our experiment is ready to go you'll notice that Google has already told us that our experiment code has been found our analytics code has been found and our experiment is now ready to go when we click start experiment we can then start sending traffic to start measuring whether or not one opt-in page is going to do better than another so with that thanks and I will see you in another video hello and welcome now in this video we are going to measure the results of the split test and we do that by going to the home page and then by going to the behavior tab scrolling down to find the experiments clicking that link and what you're going to notice is that your experiments will be running in this area you'll then want to click on the experiment that you want the results for and then you're going to get page specific information about this test all of your information is going to show up in this area including the conversion rate you do have the option of exporting this content to a PDF if you need to report to someone a client or a customer so basically the bottom panel is going to show you the variant and how it's performing how it's converting and whether or not it is likely to outperform the original page so you'll have information at a glance as to how well your page is doing and whether or not you should make changes okay so with that thanks and I will see you in another video hello and welcome now in this video we are going to set up a sales page so that we can track the results on Google Analytics so we're going to go to the page area and create a new page and we're just going to create a test sales page and we're just going to publish and save this page so our sales page is now ready we also need a thank you page that also will serve as a download page so we're going to go ahead and create that page also now one thing to note about a sales page much depends on your checkout process so for example if your checkout process takes someone to a thank you page first and they're actually going to get a download page by email you'll want to take note of that if they're going to be sent to a download page and that's the only page that they're going to be sent to you're going to want to take note of that before you actually start looking at how to structure your Google Analytics so now that we have our sales pages in place we're going to go to the goals section and we're going to create a new goal and we're going to work with the existing template that someone makes a payment as the goal we're going to click continue and then we're going to give this goal a name and we're going to make this a destination goal we're going to click continue and now we're going to put in the web page URL of the one landing page that people have to go to so in this particular case you're going to want to take note of again whether or not the checkout process takes them to the download page or the thank you page 
So whichever one is most relevant, you want to put that one in this goal area. Once you've done that, you're going to click Save. And now you actually have your second goal available, which is Sales Made. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Now, before we talk about measurement of your sales page activity on Google Analytics, we are going to want to go back into our sales made, and we're going to want to edit the goal details. Now, one of the things that you'll notice here is that we can actually set a value to being able to come to this download page. Now, in some cases, you'll have to be careful with this. It may or may not be fully accurate if, for some reason, someone comes to the page and they are actually double counted. However, what we're going to do is we're actually going to set this value at the price that we're actually going to be charging for this product. And then we're going to click Save. And this is actually going to help us to measure as we look at data. So to measure, we're going to go to the Home page, and we're then going to go to the Conversions tab. When we go to the Conversions tab, we're actually going to click Goals, and then we're going to click Goal Overview. And what you'll notice is that all of the goals are being linked together. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to set this so that we can look at just the sales made. And then you'll notice that we have a set of statistics that only reflect our sales process. So the path from the sales page to the thank you page is actually going to be in this area, the goal completion location. We also have sales made, which is a raw amount. We have the dollar amount. We have the conversion rate. And then we have the number of people who abandoned the sales page before they actually made it to make a purchase. So all of this information is going to be relevant for us as we analyze what's happening with our sales page and the path to actually making a purchase. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Hello and welcome. Now in this video, we are going to set up a split test for our sales page. And in order to do that, we are going to go to our home page. And when we get there, we're going to go to the Behavior tab. We're going to scroll down, and then we're going to click Experiments. Now, we are going to use the Create Experiment button, and we'll click this and open it. And we're going to give our experiment a name. We're going to select our goal, and our goal is going to be Sales Made. And then we're going to determine how much traffic is going to go to the experiment page, and we're going to make that 50%. We're going to turn on the email notification for important changes. And in this particular case, we're going to take a look at the advanced options. Now, what we want is we want the traffic to be distributed evenly. So if there are two visitors for the original page, we want two for the variant. What happens if you don't click this is the traffic is determined dynamically. So we're actually going to turn this on. We're also going to set a minimum amount of time for the experiment to run. We're actually going to set it for three days. Now, when you set a confidence threshold, the higher you set the threshold, the more confident you can be in the result. If we were to take this drop-down menu and we were to set this at 99.5, this is what we would need in terms of confidence before Google Analytics declared that there was a definite winner in terms of which sales page is converting better. So once you have those things, you can then click Next Step. So now we're going to configure our experiment, and we're going to put the original sales page in one of the dialog boxes, and we're going to put the variant in the other dialog box. Now if we like, we can actually rename these internally for our purposes. What we're going to do now is we're going to click Next Step. So now Google Analytics is going to give us a code that we are to insert manually. So we're going to copy this entire code, and we're going to put this in the header tag of the original page. And so we're going to place the code in the header tag, and then we're going to click Update. We're then going to publish the page. And now our page is then ready in order to conduct the experiment. So we're now going to go back to Google Analytics. 
and we're then going to click Next Step. Once our code then says Validate, we can then click Start Experiment. And then Google will tell us that our experiment has then launched. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Hello and welcome. Now in this video, we are going to track and analyze the data from our split test of the sales page. In order to do that, we are actually going to go to the home page. We're then going to go to the behavior tab, and then we're going to go to the experiments section. We get to the experiment section, you're actually going to see that there is a sales page test. You're going to click inside of that test and you should start to see some things that are familiar based on what we did with the experiment of the squeeze page. You'll see the variant section at the bottom. You'll see that there is a conversion, a conversion rate and a comparison to the original as well as a probability of outperforming the original and all of the data available in this page. You'll also see that you can actually export your data into a PDF and that you have control over the experiment on this page. Now, of course, it's important that we monitor the experiment, but we did set up a fail safe in that we are going to be emailed if there are going to be any major changes in what happens with this data. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Hello and welcome. Now this video, we are going to set up an upsell on Google Analytics. And so what we're going to do is we're actually going to create another sales page and another download page. And in order to expedite things, we're just going to clone two pages and call them upsell sales page and upsell download page. So we now have an upsell page and we now have an upsell sales page. So now we are going to go to Google Analytics. Now, the first thing we're going to do is to reconfigure our goal. So we're going to go into the admin area and we're going to go into the goal area. And now what we're going to do is click new goal. Now we are still going to go with the pre-made template of making a payment. And then we're going to click continue. And what we're going to do is we're just going to call this an upsell and we're going to create a new destination. And then we'll click continue. We're now going to write in our new download page. We're going to write in a value. And this time we are actually going to turn on the funnel for our goal. So we're now going to write in the required steps for the goal. And we'll determine which of the steps are going to be required. We'll consider that the intermediate step or the upsell sales page is going to be a required step. And then on to the upsell download page. We have everything in our funnel. We're then going to click save. So we have now set up our upsell page for Google Analytics. Now in the next video, we'll take a look at how you're going to measure performance of this funnel. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, to analyze the data for the upsell, you're going to go to your home page, and then you're going to go to the conversion section, and then you're going to click on goals, and then you're going to click on overview. Once you do that, you can actually switch the drop down menu specifically to goal number three. I'll show you all of the data that you want to see regarding the upsell. Now, obviously, we are going to want to find out when people are abandoning a process before they actually get to purchase the upsell. And so really, in order to do that, we do need to set up a multi-step process, which we will actually do in the next two videos. But now you've seen how to set up your upsell, how to track it as if you were tracking any of the other goals and to watch specifically the statistics for that level of content. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Now that we have all of our pages set up, we want to be able to answer a question. If someone were to opt in to our page, how many of those people would actually become buyers? 
how many of them would actually become buyers of the upsell. And we want to be able to look at Google Analytics to answer that question. And so we're going to do that and we're going to set it up in Google Analytics right now. So we're going to start with the goals page. And what we're going to do is we are going to click create a new goal. We're going to work with the make a payment template. Now, because we want to know how many people are going to make it all the way through the funnel, we're actually going to place the upsell download page in the destination. Now we can put in a value for the upsell. And what we want to do now is turn on the funnel. And we want to place the steps in on the way to actually getting to the end of the funnel. Now in this case, we've determined that success is going to be that when the person has opted in, they're going to be taken directly to the sales page. So we're going to have that set up in our funnel. And then if they purchase the product, they're going to be taken immediately to the upsell page. And then they would be taken to the goal destination. So if someone made it all the way through all three steps, we want to find out how many of those people were those that actually opted in to our page. So once we have all the steps there, we're actually going to click save. And we have now set up a success funnel that we want to be able to track the data to find out if people that are opting in are also completing the entire funnel. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now in this video, we are going to discuss evaluating the success of our funnel. In order to do that, we're going to go back to our home page, and then we're going to go to the conversions link. We're then going to click on the goals, and then we are going to look at the funnel visualization link. Now, currently, there is no data because the goals were just set. However, as your funnel begins to get traffic, what you'll be able to do is you'll be able to see a visualization of what is happening in your funnel. And at every stage, you'll be able to evaluate what's happening and where people may or may not be dropping off. Now, one aspect of your funnel visualization that also exists in some of the other reporting screens is that you can actually go to the intelligence link. And when you have a funnel, this is a good place for you to be able to ask questions about what is happening in your funnel. For example, in the intelligence area, Google says you can ask basic questions, you can check performance, and you can chart trends. So you can ask any of these questions in the following form in the intelligence area to get answers on what is happening in your funnel. Now at any point in time, if you want to find out what is happening with any of the other goals, all you'll need to do is to hit this drop down arrow and you'll be able to look at, at exact data on the opt-in level as well as the sales made level. So basically, in order to make sense of the goal funnel, you'll need to decide on what success looks like for reaching the end of the funnel. If you determine that it is reaching the first download page, you'll need to designate that as your goal. If you determine it's reaching the second download page, you'll need to use that as your goal. But again, you will be able to visualize where people are making decisions so that you will be able to make changes that fit your business. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Now, once you have defined your funnel, you will then want to set up some basic reports to make it easy for you to get the information that you want when you want it. And so to do that, we're actually going to go to the customization link and we're going to go to the custom reports. And we're going to set up some basic reports to get information on our goals. To do that, we're going to click new custom report. We're going to give our report a title. To do that, we're just going to have one report tab and we're going to use the explorer type report. Now we are going to add several metrics. Now we're going to call this metric group, our goals group. And then we're going to add metrics. And we're going to add in our goal conversion. We'll scroll down. And what we want to know is whether or not we're reaching our value. So we'll determine this by doing our upsell. We can come back.
We can come back again. And we can continue to add metrics to add to our basic report. Now, once we have all the information that we're going to want in our report, we'll need to add a dimension. And typically, one of the easiest dimensions to add, along with any goal-related report, will be the date. So if you go to the Time menu, and you pick the date, you'll then have a complete report. If you were to try to add something without having a dimension, what would happen is that Google would tell you that you still need to have at least one dimension. So we're going to add in the dimension of time. And we'll also do a date index. And once you do that, you are then going to determine which view or account you want to look at. We're going to look at one account. And it is the one that's already selected. So we're going to have one view selected. And then we're going to click Save. And that's going to bring us to a page that actually brings up our report. Now, if we want to save that report, what we're going to do is we're going to click Save. And when we save this report, that means we'll be able to come back and reuse it when we come back to the site while changing the date parameters to give us the information that we want. So we're going to go ahead and click OK. And we should now have a basic saved report. And in order to check that, what we're going to do is we're going to click the Save Reports link. And you'll see now that we have our Are We Hitting Our Numbers daily report. So if we want to view it, we can just view it. And we can bring it back on our dashboard in this way. So that's how you would create a basic report in order to show the information, save that report so that you'll be able to reuse it any particular day and get the information that you want. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Hello and welcome. Now in this video, we are going to do a few more reports, but we're going to do some more advanced reports. And to do that, we're actually going to import some from the Solutions Gallery. And we are now inside of our custom report area, so we're going to click Import from Gallery. What will happen is the gallery will open up into a window. And what we can do is we can actually search the gallery for some of the reports that we may want based on parameters that we place in. Or we can actually import some of the more popular reporting. And so in this particular case, we see that there are three very popular reports, Occam's Razor, New Google Analytics User Starter Bundle, and Content Analysis Dashboard. So we're going to import the first of these. And then we're going to select the view. And in this particular case, we are going to stick with the search traffic and all traffic sources, as well as the digital dashboard. Now we're going to click Create. And so now we can actually look at some of the reports that we have here. In particular, we can start by looking at search traffic. So as you can see here, what will happen is that when we look at these reports, the dashboard will open up and we can decide whether or not we want to create a saved report with this information or not. For example, we may look at an all traffic report that's telling us where all of our traffic is coming from. Once again, this may be a report that we want to save. So we might go ahead and click save and then click OK. That means then that this report is going to be reusable anytime we want to get it in our save reports area. We can go back to the gallery and we can import the starter bundle or we can actually input any other report that we want. For example, here's one visit and goal conversion by traffic source. And so we can import this report. Now again, here's another report that we might save that tells us how we're acquiring our traffic. And of course, we can change the date if we need to, or even the way that it's rendered by week or month. And what we're going to do is we're going to save this report also. 
So one of the ways that you work with advanced reports is that you can import them into your data, run the report, and save it and use it as your saved report. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Hello and welcome. Now, Google Analytics no longer sends out custom reports automatically. And so you'll need to find other ways to monitor what's happening in your online properties. However, there are custom alerts, and custom alerts will give you the opportunity to get an email or text message telling you when certain events have happened in your online web properties. Now, what you'll want to do is you'll want to go to the customization area, and then you'll want to click custom alerts. Then you'll click manage custom alerts. Then you'll click new alert. Now, of course, you are going to pick a new alert for the particular web property that you're working with. However, you have a lot of flexibility in terms of the kind of alert that you want to set up. You can set a particular day, week or month for the period, and then you can actually set up an alert based on the goals that you have already set up for your site. So in this particular case, we've already set up some goals and we can make it so that we are contacted when we're meeting those goals in a certain way. So for example, if we decide to name an alert goal reach opt-in on a particular day. So we want to be alerted on a particular day when we reach a certain goal, we're going to have ourselves to be emailed. We can also set up our mobile device. Now, what we're going to do with our goals in particular is we are going to set our alert conditions based on our goals. And so we can make a determination that when our sales made are greater than a certain percentage, increase by a certain percentage or increase on a percentage basis, then we can have ourselves an alert sent. And this in some ways is even more convenient than having a report sent. So let's say that what we want to do is we want to determine that the sales value for a particular day is above $270, that we want to have an alert sent to us. And then we have one alert. We can actually set multiple alerts. So we can actually set a new alert based on another goal that we have. So if we pick one of our goals, this time we can determine that we want to have an opt-in goal. And we want to be alerted when the conversion rate increases by more than 1% compared to the same day last week. Now, again, what you're doing is you're basically creating custom alerts in the form of a report when you actually get the results. So as you start to grow into looking at your data on an everyday basis, you will then start to determine what you want to be alerted by and have Google Analytics automate the sending of this report. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. You've now seen Google Analytics applied on a very practical level. We've now set up your opt-in page, sales pages, and your thank you or success pages. And we've also given you a set of metrics you can look at when you're analyzing the effects of the traffic that's coming to those pages. We've gone into detail on how you can set up split tests so you can begin to apply them to all of your offers. So the most important factor to remember is how you get the code onto your page. Now remember that if you choose to use HTML pages or websites, you'll make sure that you need to place the code on all of your pages. Now if you choose to use a page building system not associated with your site, you'll need to notate it correctly as well as the HTML code if you decide to measure the effect of a funnel. With this practical example you've been given, you're now ready to undertake Google Analytics and even go beyond what's been presented by finding more advanced features. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you either in another video or in another course.